Welcome back friends. In the previous session now we finished our first part of our topic of gaseous exchange and respiration and we ended up our discussion by discussing the concept of gaseous exchange in the plants. In today's session we are going to continue with uh, the concept of respiration and we are starting the second part of our topic which is gaseous exchange and respiration. So in the gaseous exchange we discuss the how uh, the process for exchange of gases from atmosphere to the blood and how the gases they are transported through blood to different parts of the body. In respiration we are going to see how uh, when the gases they reach the respiratory um, sites or when the gases they reach the sites where they are used, we are going to see the mechanism on how uh, reactions they are taking place in the respiratory site so that um, catabolism, uh, breaking down of uh, carbohydrates, proteins and uh, lipids to release energy in the body which is used in different functions of the body. So gaseous exchange is sometimes called as the external respiration and respiration which we are going to discuss is sometimes called as cellular or internal respiration. So respiration by definition is the process by which chemical energy in organic molecule is released by oxidation. So the process requires oxygen, that's why we call it as oxidation. Uh, in chemistry we define oxidation uh, by three ways, either oxidation at the addition of oxygen, removal for hydrogen or removal for electron. So in respiration also, all of these categories of reaction they are taking place. We see some of the reaction they are involving removal for hydrogen some of the reaction they are involving uh, addition of oxygen and some of the reaction they are involving removal for electrons and that's why we are saying that uh, respiration the process by which chemical energy in organic molecules is released by oxidation or we can define in the physiological process in which food substances such as carbohydrate, lipid and protein are broken down to release energy so it's the physiological process in which we have our different substrate which we are, are doing metabolism to release energy from them. This energy is then made available to living cell in the form of ATP. So ATP, we are calling it the energy carrier, energy carrier of the cell. So or is sometimes called it the temporary energy store of the cell. That means um, ATP is not the permanent store. Permanent store of energy is um, through storage of molecules such as lipids, but the temporary store of energy can be stored in the form of ATP or sometimes can be called as the energy career. Uh, our second session will be the discussion on the structure of ATP. It is significant and it uses in the human body. So the biochemical processing which occur within the cell is called cell respiration. The biochemical process which occur within the cell which is added the, into the formation of ATP is called cell respiration. If it requires oxygen, it is described as anaerobic. Here it's not anaerobic, it is aerobic. So if it requires oxygen, if it requires oxygen, then it, it is described as aerobic. It is described as aerobic respiration. And if the process takes place in the absence of oxygen, it is described as anaerobic. Anaerobic. So anaerobic means in the the respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen, and aerobic means respiration takes place in the presence of uh, oxygen. Now let's move to the uh, second page and let's see how this introduction to respiration topic continues. So the organic molecules mostly or commonly used as substrate in cell respiration, they are carbohydrate. Organic molecules mostly commonly used as substrate in cell respiration, they are carbohydrates such as glucose or fast. However, sometimes, as we, can, we shall see later, uh, proteins they can also be used in respiration. The uh, order of being used and what is the preference of which substrate will be used first before the other, we, we shall discuss them later. Now, the substrates they are broken down gradually by a series of enzymes controlled reactions. Enzymes controlled reactions. Each releases a small amount of energy. 
some of which is transferred to molecules of chemical called the adenosine triphosphate which is ATP the rest of the energy is lost as heat so uh, some of the students they get are confused why do we say that if the an organism is present in, in a condition where we have a low environmental temperature then uh, the alternative or one among the method or the mechanism by which body will increase the body temperature is by increasing the rate of metabolism and uh, some of students they get confused that how does it comes that the increase in the rate of metabolism will lead to the increase in the body heat so the, the mechanism behind is because in the process of respiration some of the energy is going to be used or some of the energy is going to be stored as ATP so some of energy is stored as ATP but the remaining energy the remaining energy is lost as heat so this energy which is lost as heat uh, it is very important it is very important when we are discussing that uh, um, when uh, an organism is exposed in the environment which have low environment temperature then what will happen that the organism will increase the rate of metabolism and the mechanism of increasing the rate of metabolism will be the, the mechanism uh, of increasing the body the body temperature so ATP is the energy carrier of a cell the energy in the ATP can then be used when required in the reaction in the cell which require energy these are called as anabolic reaction normally synthesis reaction in the body they are using energy and they are categorized or they are called as anabolic reaction where you have uh, other reactions which are catabolic reaction they are reaction involving the breakdown of uh, compounds and since they involve the breakdown of compounds they do not require energy but they release energy so cell respiration cell respiration should not be confused with gaseous exchange which is the process of acquiring oxygen from and getting rid of carbon dioxide into the environment so cell respiration and gaseous exchange uh, they are two different uh, concepts and two different processes in the body respiration involve the catabolism or breakdown of the organic compound in the cell to release energy but um, this is exchange is the acquiring of oxygen from the environment and get rid or removing carbon dioxide from the body to the environment so this is exchange may involve organs or structures which special which are specialized surfaces for efficient exchange of gases such as the lungs and the gills however in some documents or in some books they tend to categorize respiration which is oxidation of glucose to carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy into two parts so uh, don't worry if you see in some of books that uh, we have two types of respiration which is cellular or internal tissue respiration and gaseous or external respiration so don't you wonder some of the reference books they have written this concept so when we are discussing over cellular or internal or tissue respiration is what we are going to discuss in this subtopic is the metabolic process within the cell which releases energy from glucose that's what you call it the cellular or tissue respiration metabolic process within the cell that releases energy from glucose but a gaseous exchange or external respiration is the process involved in, in obtaining oxygen for respiration for respiration and remove of gaseous waste which is normal carbon dioxide from from respiration so this marks the end of our, our introduction to our subtopic of respiration in the next session we'll be discussing about our ATP we shall see the structure for ATP uh, the significance of ATP and the uses for ATP in the body I know some of you have studied ATP in the topic of biochemistry but no problem uh, if we repeat uh, some of the few concepts uh, about ATP and then after that we will discuss the concept of respiratory substance and the structure for mitochondria thank you